All right, we are back and we have our first speaker, Matteo Coppola. Matteo is a director of category integrated business planning at Kellogg's Europe. Uh, Matteo's keynote is called, as I said, Decoding the Turbulence, Facing Challenges and Changing the Unchangeable. This is super exciting. And Matteo will show us the true cost of bad decisions and how we can navigate through the stormy waters of our world today. You will be challenging us, Matteo, on the very way we think and act in our organizations. I'm super excited. And I think by the time you are done, people on the Strategy Fest today, they won't be just Strategy Fest attendees. They will be certified decision-making masters. So I know it's a very bold statement. It's uh, the stage is yours right now, Matteo, and we are really excited to hear from you. Wow. So thank you very much, Tim. Thank you for having me here. Of course, uh, I need to admit it's the first time on this format and forum. So really thank for all the people connected all over the world. I guess uh, it's uh, more than 2,000 people. No? And uh, I guess not everyone is coming from me. So I feel humbled. By, by this opportunity. So before we start, uh, what I would like to do is a quick poll to practice decision making. I like to act uh, on what we do. So the question for you to answer is, uh, is digital transformation important for your organization? And please uh, go ahead and vote. We take uh, ah, interesting 97% uh, almost are saying yes, it is uh, it is important. So it would be also interesting to share with all of you that 70% of the project that are related to digital transformation are failing. So now moving to the, the deck, uh, starting the, the session today, I would like to share a little bit of a context on why this might happen no? and what we could do in order to face this. Now, uh, also what I would like to share is uh, I served one third of my career as an integrated business planning uh, person and, uh, you know, is the, the most important decision tool of the organization, which any organization should have. So decision is part of my working since uh, one third of my career. Now, to align on the grammar and language. One thing is we keep hearing about change, especially after the COVID, no? the new norm. But guys, what I would like to say is that change has always been there even before humanity. We'll be there after humanity and of course is there with us. So it is nothing strange. What is true that the assumption that we're through yesterday, last week or two weeks ago are changing faster because we are more interconnected. But please, uh, while thinking through this deck, uh, Think about change and how fast the environment around us is changing. Right? If everything is changing, I would like now to move to this other statement, especially I'm a guy coming from the south of Italy. In the south of Italy, we know what is good and what is bad, not necessarily aligned to the standard norm of the old world. But this is important because when reading this statement, now wrong is wrong, even if everyone is doing it, and right is right, even if no one is doing it. It seems so right. Oh, it seems morally and uh, you know super friendly. Yeah, I, I love this. But how can this exist in business together with a change? So if change is, is true, is this statement always true? Now, as has been demonstrated from the question, oh, digital transformation, it is uh, an important thing to do for our organization. But uh, why then only 30% are successful? Because it depends on the context. So there's no such a thing as a decision that is always an absolute truth. It depends on the context where we are living now. And uh, imagine digital transformation is one of the things that usually fails. Another thing, imagine I would like to invest on uh, you know, the customer uh, emotion during the physical shop visit into a blockbuster shop. Yeah, good decision, but we have Netflix out there, right? So it is really a good decision. Or I would like to invest on operational excellence for my factory producing phone is 2007. I'm producing Nokia and iPhone is coming. Uh -huh. Is it really interesting to invest on operational excellence on this context? So really, 
I think with these two grammars that we have now learned, huh? everything is changing and context becomes really important. And everything is changing so fast. So how do we drive value? And what do I use personally to drive value in the organization? So now I, I would like to ask uh, to, uh, to use a little bit of creativity. So I'm in Dublin, there is a, okay, today 21 degrees, honestly, it's not that, that cold, but usually when it's cold, when what's the body is doing is uh, protecting immediately the critical organs. So you have your hands become colder, your feet are colder. It would, would never think for a body that is not going to protect the heart on the brain before the hands and the foot. But um, what, especially when we are in business, no, in, in, in the more mature environment, in startup is less uh, frequent to happen. But in the established organization, we usually think as uh, I'm the hand, I have a KPI for my hands, and I'm going to improve my hands or my foot feeling. But rather, maybe I just need a blanket to, uh, to, to cover the full body. So really, this is one of the first lessons that I, I share with uh, myself. I keep repeating myself. When thinking about the body, protecting the, the priority and the purpose is to keep the body alive. Are we taking care of keeping the body alive and protecting our full purpose, that is the full body? Or are we thinking about protecting the part of it? Now, this is starting to be the framework in which we will navigate uh, the next uh, five minutes. No? In fact, after we understand what are the priorities, what is important is, and we keep hearing, uh, I think there is a lot of work on uh, uh, the why, no? Simon Sinek, all this book on why and the purpose. However, those are beautiful intentions overall. But how do we bring a culture into organization, especially on a big organization, to think differently? And what we have learned before, that we are changing and we change very fast. This is a need. Then we need to act very fast. And what is uh, one of the behavior that I immediately link to the act fast is those people that they are taking care of the full organization. Again, I'm working for my foot, but I'm going to protect the full body because I, I take care of the organization. And uh, I also am very careful in finding those people that are just sending uh, email and or saying, I told them to do that, but they are not listening. Oh no, but this is not my job. Can you imagine a, a part of your body not protecting the full body or the full organization? And then also with this uh, fast paced action and uh, the wheel of taking care of the organization, what is happening immediately is the opportunity to challenge the holy cow in the organization. Again, truth are not always there. We are changing. And so here is the three-step framework that I always use, whatever is the project, whatever is uh, the situation where I am. First of all, we need a decision-making which is happening fast. I've seen thousands of decisions in these years of supply chain that were fastly executed and provided good results. I rather never seen decisions that have been postponed, delayed, who drove any value for the organization. So in order to have this fast decision, of course, what is important is that also fast learning. We are changing, we're adapting fast. Now they talk about resiliency, but really resilience is is not as important as adapting and learning. Now, in order to then learn, I need to have people that are empowered to take this decision. Now, if you wait uh, for a decision to go through all the layer of the organization to happen, okay, the, the, the nature around me won't be forgiving. So people need to be empowered, but to be empowered, they need to take decision, understanding the full organization and therefore exercising their critical thinking. Here is how I use crisis as a catalyst. Now, crisis is an adverse event. We are all, especially in supply chain, I think is the most uh, no, crisis by definition team. But uh, what's happening of really beautiful on a crisis is that imagine you have a supplier going in, in shortage today, which is jeopardizing production, which is jeopardizing distribution, 
which is jeopardizing the market and the customer behind. Now you have found an excuse in an adverse event, but to connect the full team. There is immediately, like the body is called now, and the body wants to protect the, the heart, right? Or the brain. So they are all together now. There's no function anymore. So this is really important because, uh, again, we give, it give us the possibility to challenge what was before. No? The market say, I know my customer. Okay, but now we understand what is important for your customer, which is the top, the top product that you want to share, which are you know, the, the top lane that we need to protect, the top production we need to do, and even speaking with procurement. And this can happen only with these people that they want to take care. Imagine to have a, a person just sending an email, ah, the supplier is not delivering. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Good help. Right. Of course you wouldn't you wouldn't do. Now, before we approach to the end of this and uh, and the question and answer, in fact, what I would like to give to, to share with you is my personal compass. I don't have map to understand what is a uh, hundred percent right and wrong. And by the way, I know that the context uh, won't even care. I know that there are no superheroes out there and artificial intelligence won't save me. So in this compass, really important for my team, for whatever I trust and uh, I, I believe is bringing value for the organization. Are the, the priorities clear for everyone? Do we know which are our critical organs? Cross organization, not thinking about one part of the organ. And then how do we foster critical thinking? Now, I could speak for hour, and I know that we have a limited time, no? but foster critical thinking is either coming, take the opportunity of a crisis to learn. If you don't have crisis and you want to be a little bit more educated, use cash flow management. You know, inventory, I call it the refugee of, uh, uh, of sinner, no? because everything is passed to inventory. Demand wrong, production wrong, or your procurement wrong, you will find an inventory commercially wrong, you will find an inventory is a beautiful excuse to connect people. Or oh, the most advanced way to connect from the CEO of the company till the, you know, everyone really is the IBP or the EBP or the SNOP, however you want to call. So those processes that are a decision-making tool within the organization. And once you build step one and two, I guarantee that if you understand where critical priority are and we create an army of people that are empowered to use their critical thinking, we are challenging and adapting to the status quo. So this is really a message of care for the company. We need to care for the company that we are serving until we decide to serve for the company. And then uh, the question that I will leave to you before ending over to question and answer is how will you take care of your organization? So um, that's me, and uh, let's move to question time. All right, I am back with you, Matteo, and I was enjoying uh, the presentation, but also I was in enjoying the reactions. You, can, you had actually almost 150 reactions, Matteo, when you were speaking, to tell you how relevant that was to so many folks on the call or in the event today. And you had around, maybe 20 questions. So I picked three of those to see yep. if uh, we can answer them. We have around six, seven minutes right now. I'm going to start Hopefully with the first one. to answer. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we, we can take three. Let's see, let's see how we go. Um, let's start with this one. How can businesses observe changes from within to prioritize and decide where to invest? <laughs> so again, I, I just have a, a, a compass no. But for sure, I would start. It depends also on the maturity of the company. In, in big company, you might have a, a, a new startup in, inside the company. Like, for example, when you want to launch the e-commerce of your company, even a big company, the first thing that I would, I would like to have is uh, the quick return on feedback from the customer itself, right? And this is true from whatever investment we decide for the customer, but also inside supply chain processes, no? always go through uh, what they call the minimum viable product or no? the minimum viable investment no? that we can do. And then try and error fast. Again, I am a sponsor of deciding and act now and learn from it rather than 
do a lot of philosophy which is not bringing i mean it's good as a you know to to discuss maybe in front of a good beer here in dublin a pint of guinness but it's not effective for the business so my recommendation is always to go on a pilot and don't wait you know already what you want to do try it so that would be my my answer that's a great answer. Sorry, I'm not playing with my phone. I'm just taking the answer, the questions from this side. It's easier for me to read them from here. So I have another question for you, which is how do you identify the relevant context for your organization in a world where we're flooded with data from all corners? And how does one identify what to look at? This is a very good question, actually. So <laughs> that's a, a, a beautiful question. So. Uh, Relevant context is, uh, you know, usually I, I look as a comparison. No? I, for example, while managing the supply chain that we are managing in, a, in, in Kellogg, I'm asking to myself, which are the best in class and which are the worst in class? And uh, among the best in class, no, what can I try to pick and learn and develop versus the status that we have, the context where we are? Again, not with the intent uh, to have uh, this uh, absolute precise answer, but with the intent to understand, okay, we understand in the industry, this truth seems to be more relevant than the other. Now, inside the organization, then, what I usually do is it could be different conditions. I, I've, I work for an organization where so priority were super clear, the marketing department were entrepreneur, and I work, in, I work for organization where the marketing department wasn't clear, maybe it was more a, a reaction to the market rather a, a proactive. Now, in each of those cases, I make sure that supply chain though is the backbone of what's happening and connecting the relevant information. In fact, through supply chain, you have in, in supply chain friends, you know, I don't know which part of uh, the business this, this person is asking, but whatever, check with your supply chain friends and understand what is moving, what is not moving, and uh, how are we selling, how we're producing, how are, pro you know, wh which are the bottleneck we find, and understand what's really relevant going back to the customer and consumer. Again, customer and consumer will eventually be our North Star, you know, which our compass needs to serve. Okay, I'm asked to have one last question. There are so many that are good. So I'm going to shift to the most voted question in the, um, in the chat here from, let's see, is it actually from Matt? Okay, yeah. So how can we integrate emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, and Internet of Things into the existing infrastructure to drive that innovation and create new business opportunities? Wow. I have goosebump for this. Now... This is a really a strong debate uh, on, uh, on my life right now and uh, for my internal and external community and a topic very close to me. First of all, I'm a great sponsor of machine learning and AI. Yes, it is the direction where to go. However, they are an answer to a need. So before even thinking to implement machine learning and AI, which we need to, because if we don't do, I mean, we will be cut out from the market. The question I would have is, what problem are you trying to solve? And what stakeholder are involved into this problem solving? I'll give you an example. You want to implement into the deployment uh, side, no? in the distribution uh, machine learning. The first part that I would ask is, are we mapping what our team is doing every day? And then is assessing no, and doing a Pareto of the activity that our team is doing every day. There might be some hint ah, I always have this shortage and I always have, need to have this action. I might think to have some machine learning and AI additional intelligence there, right? So again, machine learning and AI are not replacing the human. Even in chat GPT that we are all exposed, the secret is uh, to ask a good prompt. Otherwise, uh, chat GPT doesn't do anything for you. So is what question are you intending to solve? Aligned to the problem statement before is really, really crucially important for me. Yeah, otherwise you just have your marketing team taking that word AI and putting it in front of every single sentence 
Um, thank you so much, Mateo. That was incredible. I'm sure that the answers to the questions were also as useful as the presentation. We were um, excited to have you, and I think uh, we're proud to have, you, to have had you as the first speaker today. Thanks again. Thank uh, you very much. Really more. humble to be here. Huh? Really exciting, exciting, really. Thank you. If you want hotter weather, you can come to London. It's uh, 28 degrees right now. <laughs> Thanks. I will do. <laughs> Talk to you very soon. Before Bye. I go, thank you so much. I'm going to introduce our next speaker, actually, uh, right now, Laura Blackmore from Cascade. Cascade um, has been building a platform for strategy execution and better decision making for over 10 years. And we are very proud of our own Laura coming always with her special sauce and special um, scenarios to show to our customers and future customers how Cascade works. So stay with us. The next session will be hopefully very, very exciting with a lot of incredible tips and ideas for you and your organization. Thanks, Matteo. And thanks, everyone.